Welcome to Value-Based Care, Value-Based Quality and Safety. This is Lecture B, Measurement of Value-Based Care. The objectives for this lecture, Measurement of Value-Based Care, are to identify the common characteristics of quality metrics, identify the categories of quality metrics, discuss how quality measures are calculated, and discuss the basis of provider resource use measures. Healthcare organizations utilize a variety of methods and tools to improve their organization's quality and safety. Common methodologies include Lean, Six Sigma, and Change Management. Lean focuses on the process, not the people, and promotes value by eliminating unnecessary waste. Lean teaches us how to streamline processes and to view the process from the customer's perspective. Six Sigma emphasizes standardization of the process, eliminating defects or bad outcomes. Change management focuses on how people and teams are affected by transition. Regardless of the methodology, understanding how to collect data and measure processes and outcomes is essential to thriving in the era of value-based care. In the ABCs of measurement, the National Quality Forum describes a measure as a standard, a basis for comparison, a reference point against which other things can be evaluated. Measures drive improvement, inform consumers, and influence payment. Measures can be conveyed in a variety of ways, including percentage, average, ratio, and absolute numbers. Successful measurement strategies must be accurate, useful, easy to interpret, and consistently reported. Before determining your measure, consider the following questions. Where is the data coming from? Is the measure flawed? Is the information valuable? Will our organization benefit from measuring this? Is this data translatable? Can others around us understand this measure? Can the data be collected time and time again without variation? Can multiple departments report the data in the same manner? You may be collecting new data points, or you could be using data that you are already collecting for other purposes, through patient surveys or clinical observations. Data is often flawed due to inconsistent reporting, which is why data accuracy and data integrity are vitally important. Data collection is obviously a key part of measurement, and this can be both easier and more challenging with the use of electronic health records, EHRs. The first question relates to whether the providers consistently record the information. For instance, unless institutions mandate that smoking status be documented, it is very likely that some providers will and others won't include it. Second, sometimes data are recorded in different places or multiple places within the EHR, and sometimes the data mean the same thing in these different places and sometimes they don't. To have a consistent measure across times and across departments, the location of the data source needs to be clearly specified and the providers need to know to record the data in the appropriate place. Third, are the data recorded in structured form, or do they need to be extracted from narrative notes? Structured form usually means there are fixed choices for providers to choose from, such as pull-down menus with choices. If the data can be collected in structured form, they can be measured with relatively little effort and will be consistent across different users. If they have to be extracted from narrative notes, they can be reliably extracted, but the effort will be much more labor-intensive to do it accurately and consistently. Best practices, then, would be, wherever possible, to configure the EHR to collect the required data in structured form, in a consistent place, and to train providers about the key data and where and how to record it. Measures can be grouped into one of three categories, structure, process, and outcomes. Structure refers to characteristics of institutions and providers. Process is what is done to the patient, and outcomes are what happens to the patient. As you can see from the slide, structure influences process, which in turn affects outcomes. These classifications were originally coined in 1966 by physician researcher Avedis Donabedian. The Donabedian framework has evolved over time and is applied to healthcare systems to measure overall quality and inform strategic quality improvement planning. 
In conjunction with the original framework, the healthcare industry has accepted a fourth category of measurement, patient experience. Patient engagement, patient perception, is a crucial component of good care. Patient perception can be an organization's greatest challenge or its ultimate strength. The Institute of Medicine's groundbreaking work, Crossing the Quality Chasm, stated that quality needed to be customized based on patient needs and values. The new models of care and reimbursement have emphasized patient-centeredness in their incentive structure. Another modification of Donna Bedian's original formulation is known as the SEEPS model. Carrion and her associates broadened the concept of structure to include what they call the work system as a key influencer on process and ultimately outcomes. The work system includes the people, the tasks they do, the tools, such as EHRs and others that they use, as well as the organizational structure and the internal and external environment. They also broadened the conception of outcomes to include not just patient health outcomes, but organizational outcomes as well. In addition, in the SEEPS model, the direction of influence is often bidirectional among the various parts. Given the link between quality and reimbursement and the use of technology in value-based care, this broader conception may be particularly useful. Measures that fall in the structure category are often tangible and easy to collect. They assess the organizational infrastructure. Structure measures provide crucial information about an organization's capability to meet demand. However, structure measures do have limitations. As the issue brief on measuring health quality from Families USA indicates, structure measures only show you one piece of information and do not shed light on the entire process. For example, the number of hours that a technician is available to read a CT scan does not capture if CT scans are read during these time increments, nor does it tell you with what accuracy the CT scans are being read. Process measures look at how care is delivered. They are used to decipher if the patient is given specific services that are consistent with the recommended care guidelines. Process measures are typically very straightforward. There is no gray area. In other words, did the heart attack patient receive aspirin or not? Outcome measures are often understood to be the most important gauge of quality, as they evaluate a patient's health as a result of the care they received. Outcome measures tend to look at the intended or unintended consequences or effects that care has on the patient. Developing meaningful outcome measures can be challenging, as they are complex in nature, and often require a wealth of detailed information and staff members to analyze the patient population. To determine the rate of readmissions because of an infection, we would have to know who has been readmitted within the specific time frame, the reason why the patients were initially hospitalized, and why they were readmitted. Patient experience measures are the perceptions of the customer, including their perceptions of the interpersonal aspects of care. Perceptions are the basis of the consumer's understanding and will vary from person to person based on their beliefs, cultural background, and values. They assess many aspects of care, including the clarity of the information the physician provides. A measure of patient experience might be the percentage of patients who report that their doctor always communicates well. Positive patient experience has a well-documented relationship with quality care. Patients that perceive a positive care experience tend to engage in their treatment plans and have better outcomes. A measure is an actual measurement of the number of cases meeting a specific criteria, out of a total number of cases meeting a general criteria. It can be represented by a ratio or a percentage which use the above fraction for calculation. The denominator is calculated first. This is the description of the overall population that would be eligible for the service, process, outcome, or experience measure being calculated. The numerator is the number of specific cases that meet the condition of the measure. So with the earlier example of the process measure, heart attack patients given aspirin, the denominator would be the total number of patients admitted to the hospital for a heart attack in a given time period. The numerator would be the number of those patients from the denominator who received aspirin therapy. The goal in this case is to have the number in the numerator as close to or equal to the number in the denominator. That is, 
we would like all patients who are eligible for aspirin therapy to receive it. The example of an outcome measure, hospital readmission within 30 days of discharge, is calculated by placing the total number of hospital admissions in a given time period in the denominator. Different measures might exclude those who died or were transferred or left against medical advice from the denominator. The numerator is made up of those admissions from the denominator where the patient was readmitted to the hospital within 30 days of discharge. The goal in this case is to have the numerator as close to zero as possible, that is, that no patients would need to be readmitted. Quality measures are used for public reporting, provider incentive programs, and accreditation purposes. Public and private health plans are displaying quality measures for public review, allowing patients to be informed and knowledgeable as they choose where to go for services. Providing comparisons of quality performance data among providers also increases provider accountability. CMS has websites devoted to comparing Medicare performance data in the nursing home setting, hospitals, and home health agencies. Insurers often use quality performance measures as a gauge of quality, penalizing or rewarding providers based on their performance. Allocating payment based on quality measures, known as tiered payment systems, are a key element in value-based reimbursement. Organizations such as the Joint Commission also utilize quality measures. Healthcare consumers often view organizations with accreditation from, for example, the Joint Commission, URAC, or NCQA as having superior quality than organizations without such accreditations. Measuring quality has been a major emphasis over the past decade. With the rising costs of health care and the need to improve outcomes, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, along with other industry leaders, have created standards and goals for what quality is. CMS uses measurement tools to quantify healthcare processes, outcomes, and patient experience to deliver high quality, efficient, effective, safe, equitable, transparent, and timely care. Such care would smooth transitions among sites of care and could reduce health disparities. There are hundreds of quality measures utilized in healthcare. Some measures are mandated by government entities and are tied to reimbursement, while others are set internally and are specific to individual organizations. While many measures are related to patient health outcomes, others address issues such as the cost and efficiency of care. As healthcare services continue to climb in cost and complexity, there is a sizable interest within CMS and other payers in capturing the cost and efficiency of delivering healthcare. Measuring resource use is necessary so that we can understand how to reduce costs to our overburdened system. Tracking how many times the appropriate diagnostic test was ordered versus how many times the patient received unnecessary tests can uncover flaws in the current system or process. If we never measure the process, we may never find our inefficiencies or areas for improvement. By identifying our gaps, we can then take steps to improve our quality, reduce unnecessary waste, and ultimately increase the financial viability of the organization. Healthcare organizations have been able to successfully estimate the resources utilized when measuring simple or direct costs, such as the mean length of stay or the rate in which physicians order MRIs for patients with chronic lower back pain. Organizations are less familiar with the more complex episode and population-based measures, which are essential to capture in the value-based care model. Episode-based care measures all services related to a patient's acute event, which may include multiple health care settings. Population-based measures collect data on all care provided to a group of individuals with at least one chronic condition over a defined period of time. We turn our attention to learning more about assessing episodes of care. This is one of the relatively new areas into which it has been suggested healthcare managers expand their focus if they are to provide value-based care. According to Hornbrook, an episode of care is defined as a series of temporarily contiguous healthcare services related to the treatment of a given spell of illness or provided in response to a specific request by the patient or other relevant entity. Partridge's definition reminds us that while an episode of care refers to only one patient, 
One patient can be in multiple episodes of care at the same time. The NQF Steering Committee identified several advantages to using the episode of care approach to assess performance. First, it offers a more patient-centered way to evaluate health system performance by measuring how services and transitions are coordinated across multiple settings. Second, the episode of care approach is a way to shift performance measurement toward assessments about outcomes and ultimately value. Focusing on episodes of care highlights the linkage between the provision of specific services and the outcomes of those services. Third, episodes of care can foster new strategies for financing health care that may eliminate current adverse incentives. If providers are paid for an episode of care, effective, efficient resource use will be rewarded. Overuse and underuse will not be rewarded. Finally, at least in theory, an episode approach based on prolonged episodes can provide more generalizable insights into the overall performance of delivery systems. Patients with chronic conditions will tend to experience other acute or chronic conditions during their period of follow-up. It will be important to note whether or not the outcomes and cost of care over time for different conditions are highly correlated. The ability to generalize and make meaningful comparisons across delivery systems, communities, and regions would be extremely valuable. Episode-based measures, as compared to measures of an individual physician's performance, are preferred by many of the nation's leading government agencies, including CMS. According to CMS, episode-based measures are important because they compare more similar patients than per capita calculations, as they are defined by similar procedures or conditions. Capture the multiple ways in which services can be combined and substituted to produce the best outcome at the lowest cost. Reflect patients' view of care as they move between and across settings and managers of their care, rather than simply measuring resources used for just a part of their care in one setting and encourage improved coordination across settings included in the episode. By paying attention to how we utilize our finite resources, we will learn what treatment methods provide the most benefit to the patient at the lowest cost. While some treatments are traditionally provided in the hospital, they may be able to be performed at the nursing home or in the patient's home for a fraction of the cost with no ill consequences. As we move forward in the value-based model, we need to re-examine our mindset and assumptions. Just because we have provided care in one particular way does not mean that there isn't a better way to provide care that will allow for the same or better outcomes. We can examine how our peers are handling certain clinical diagnoses and work to make our protocols more efficient. Peer learning is a valuable tool now and will become an even more important tool in our toolbox as we move forward in the quality-driven, value-based healthcare system of the future. Episode-based resource use measures will not only cut down on duplicative and redundant services, but will deter the overuse and inappropriate use of services. Payers will no longer pay multiple providers to perform the same services on the same patients. Instead, the expectation will be to coordinate the patient's care, achieving the highest outcome at the lowest cost. All in all, resource management will bring value to the beneficiaries and ultimately the taxpayers. Resource use measures are becoming more prominent thanks to efforts made by national leaders and governmental agencies. The organizations listed on this slide are innovators and early adopters of performance measures. For example, the National Quality Forum, NQF, is a nonprofit consensus standard setting organization that has been endorsing resource use measures since 2012. The Government Accountability Office analyzed general medicine providers in large metropolitan markets using Medicare data for those practices which had higher than average claim amounts. The NQF, GAO, and other agencies have championed resource use data, as it is an integral part of evaluating the value and efficiency of care. In addition, as providers take on some of the financial risks of providing care, collecting and monitoring measures of resource use will be essential. There has also been interest not just in collecting the data, but in public reporting of results. This concludes Lecture B, Measurement of Quality-Based Care. In this lecture, we learned the following. 
Measuring patient experience is as valuable as measuring outcomes to improve quality care. Episode-based care measures capture costs across the continuum of care. Value-based care measures must pertain to the patient's health outcomes, care transitions, and the resources used to treat the patient.